Hi class, if you're watching this, it means I'm not back yet, so make sure you have the right worksheet out at the top, uh, Inequality Word Problems. We're going to launch into the first one. I want you to pause the video right now and read it. Come back when you're done. Now that you're back, we're going to say, um, it wants to know how many trips through the tunnel. So we're going to say let x equal the number of trips. Um, and then we're going to build two more sentences. It says the usual toll charge is 50 cents. So if I go 0.5x, that's equal to the usual charge. If you purchase a special sticker for 550, the toll is only 35 cents. So this is going to be the sticker price um, 550, 5.5 plus 0.35 times x. The base cost plus the rate cost. And that's going to be equal to the sticker charge. So we have the sticker charge, we have the usual charge. Okay. Um, now that we got that, uh, it says we kind of set up our inequality. To find a variable, write an inequality. We're at step two here. At least how many trips through the tunnel are needed before. And here we go with the translation. Um, this, I'm going to pull this up. Actually, I'm going to pull this up permanently. Translation says the sticker costs less than paying for each trip separately. The sticker price, the sticker amount, so here's the sticker one, is less than the paying for each trip separately, which I would call the usual charge. That's the inequality that we build. Now let's go ahead and solve that one. Um, subtract 0.35 and I get 5.5 is less than 0.15x. Divide both sides by 0.15. Um, and I get x is greater than, um, that actually becomes 550 over 15, which reduces to uh, 110 over 3, which then becomes in decimal form 33, or 36.6 repeating. Um, now that's not a trip, but it, it says if x is greater than that many trips, and how many trips through the tunnel, well as soon as you hit 36.6 trips, your sticker costs less than paying for each trip separately. So what we want to do is actually increase that and say, well, that means that at least 37 trips are needed. And that's the end of the first one. Refer back to the one from time to time, because that's a very good example of the inequality one. And the only thing I want to talk about up top with the translation has to do with the, uh, the simple phrase, less than, something to look for. Translation, Beep. but you know that. Number two, the length of the legs of an isosceles triangle. Um, I'm going to use an isosceles triangle drawing tool and label the two sides as congruent. That's an isosceles triangle because two sides are congruent and thus two angles are congruent. I'm not going to draw the angle marks now because it's going to crowd the figure. The base is half as long as each leg. Um, okay, base is half as long as each leg. Oh, I know, we like one variable, but look at this. If I shrink this down, you can't really see it. And that's going to help me kind of define my variables right now. Watch. If we say let L equal the length of the leg. Oh, there's some cursive. Length of leg in uh, what? Well, in units, because I was too lazy to put an actual unit down. That's the leg. If the base is half the leg, then watch. Half L equals length of base in units. Two let statements. Beautiful. Um, and then it says, what are the possible lengths if the perimeter is between 6 units and 16 units? Perimeter is between. Um, let's go back up. Is between means, well, it means a compound inequality. It means less than, less than, and we have an x in between two values. Let's go back down here. Okay, our perimeter, oh, let's do an expression perimeter. Perimeter is 2 times length uh, of the legs plus 1 base. I can call that perimeter in units. We can simplify that just a little bit. Um, 2 plus 1 half is 5 halves. So that's 5 halves L or 5L over 2. 
And if I put it between 6 and 16 units, that would be this. So, step 1, define. Step 2, uh, create this thing. Step 3, solve that thing. Switch colors, just for kicks. Multiply both sides by a 2. I could actually multiply by a 2 fifths, but hey, multiplying by 2 is a little bit easier right now. And then divide by 5, and I have 12 fifths is less than the length, is less than 32 fifths. Um, typically, because these are lengths, we will convert these to decimals. So that's 2.4 less than L, less than 6.4. And the question says, uh, what are the possible lengths of the legs? So I say the legs are between, using that same between word, um, well, ooh, ooh, I could say between 2.5 and 6.4, but I'm going to have to scratch that out because I just failed to notice one little thing up here. If I reread the problem just one more time to make sure I have the answer, I see this word here. The lengths are integers. So the integers between 2.4 and 6.4, I say the legs are 3, 4, uh, 5, or 6 units. There's my final. Um, let's go back to now the next one. Final sets of consecutive even integers. Who already I'm going to go let is x equal the first ci x plus two equal the second c oh consecutive even Ooh, e, e, sorry c e i and x plus four equal the third c e i. Sum is between 25 and 45. Um, I could even do one more and say 3x plus 6 equals the sum. That is showing amazing amounts of work, and I can put that sum between 25 and 45. So 25 less than 3x plus 6, less than 45. Subtract 6, you get 19, less than 3x, less than 39. <laughs> And 19 over 3, which is 6 and 1 third, less than x, less than 13. So all sets of consecutive even integers whose sum is between 25 and 45. The consecutive even integers must be between these two, all of them. Um, or actually, my x's must be. So what I have to do is I have to figure out, okay, so x could be not 6, but it could be 7. That's not even. Um, let me just say the sets could be um, I should rewrite could first one would be 8 so it could be 8 and 10 then 12 I'll put these in set notation uh, let's go 10 12 14 or 12 14 16. Let's check that last one just to make sure it has a sum between 25 and 45. If I add them all up really quick in my head, I get 42. So that works. Um, and then the bottom one, if I add them all up, I get 30. So that works. They all have a sum between 25 and 45. Check. Got that one done. Number four, we have a test for Jim. Jim's test score is in, or is, was eight points higher than his first score. His third score is 88. He had a B average between 88 and 89 inclusive for the three tests. What can you conclude about his first test score? There's you go. First test score. Let T equal the first. Oh, I cannot write today. First test score. Okay. If T is the first test score, um, it says the second test score was eight points higher. So guess what? T plus 8 equals the second test score. Please don't say let 88 equal the third test score. I mean, it's already there. Um, B average for the three tests. So we can include include about his first test score. Um, well, B average is defined as between 80 and 89 inclusive. So if you go up and say inclusive, inclusive means that. Uh, it means in between, but was a less than or equal to. Um, and I kind of write from smallest to biggest, so I will put this one. Oh, I'm running out of pink. Pink is 
boring me. Um, I'm going to put this one as between 80 and 89. So what goes there? Well, what has to pop here is an average. So I can actually kind of shift this down and let's do one more little formula thing for the average. Uh, the first test was a T, the second test was a T plus 8, and the third test was an 88. We're going to divide it by the number of tests that he had, 3. And that's equal to the average, or the mean, I should probably say, the average test score. That way on the next step I can simplify that a little bit. That's 2T plus 96 over 3. Okay, so now this is what we're going to solve. Multiply all three sides by a 3 and I get 240 less than or equal to 2t plus 96 less than or equal to, that would be 270 minus 3 or 287 um, or sorry, 267, sorry. Subtract 96, we get 144 less than or equal to 2t uh, which is less than or equal to, that would be 167 plus 4, 171. Divide by 2, and I get 72 less than or equal to t, uh, which is less than or equal to, we can put decimal around this, uh, 85, not round, that's exact, 85.5. Um, so I know that since these are test scores, that those can still be percentages. Uh, Jim scored, oops, in between a 72 and an 82 or 85.5 inclusive. We're going to want to use that word again because our solution includes that. Let's go to number five. Three sides of an equilateral triangle. Oh, let's try to, no, that's not equilateral. That looks pretty equilateral to me. Are increased by 20, 30, and 40 centimeters respectively. Oh crap, it's no longer equilateral. The perimeter of the resulting triangle is between three, two, twice and three times the perimeter of the original triangle. What can you include about the lengths of the sides of the triangle? Um, well, let's see. We have got a lot of let statements here to put. Why don't we say let x equal original side length. in centimeters. So I have x, x, and x. Uh, let's shift this up and let's draw a second one. I'm going to do this one a little bit freehand because this thing is not supposed to be quite equilateral. Okay, that's terrible. Whatever, go with it. Um, so the next one is going to be x plus 20, x plus 40, and then there was an x plus 30 here. And it says the perimeter of the resulting triangle. Well, we want the original triangle. So we're going to say, oh, don't put left x. Left. Let's just go 3x equals perimeter of original triangle. There's the triangle symbol in centimeters. And then if I add up all the ones of the new triangle, it's 3x plus 20 plus 30 plus 40 is 90. 3x plus 90 equals perimeter of the new triangle in centimeters. And it says the perimeter of the resulting triangle, so the resulting one is the one we just have, the new one, is between, so less than, less than, twice and three times the perimeter of the original triangle. So two times three x, and then two, three times three x. And then we just solve for x. So uh, we have 6x is less than 3x plus 90, which is less than 9x. This doesn't help. We might have to split this up. Is there one thing we can do before we split this up? Hopefully you see it. Divide everything by a 3. This is actually going to make the math a lot simpler um, right at the start. Let's make this 2x is less than x plus 30, which is less than 3x. That's just a lot simpler of a problem to work with. Okay, so we have to split this up, which means I'm going to need just a little more space than I allotted for here. Um, so I'm just going to work off the right here because I can do that. I'm going to split this up and say 2x is less than x plus 30 and 
x plus 30 is less than 3x. So let's solve. The first one is x is less than 30. And um, the next one is negative 2x is less than negative 30, or x is greater than 30. Hmm, that's an interesting idea. Let's think about that one. Oh, that would be x is greater than 30, or 15. Sorry, messed that up. I was like, what? That can't be right. Okay, so this is saying x is to be greater than 15, but less than 30. That makes sense. Um, that's one of these. 15 is less than x, which is less than 30. Um, that's an and statement, so we know that the side is between 15 and 30. Okay, last one. Um, again, pause it and read this one. This is a rate time distance one. During the first 20 miles of a 50 mile bicycle ride race, uh, his average speed was 16 miles per hour. And you need to know what his speed must be during the remainder of the race if he's to finish the race in less than 2.5 hours. Um, so what we're going to say is let s equal the speed in miles per hour. Or I guess I'm going to do it like this because it's more scientific. Oh, poop. For the rest of the race. Okay. Um, so we essentially have to look at this because we have the first 20 miles and then we have the last 30. So for the first 20, um, we know that distance is equal to rate times time. Uh, for the first 20, his time would have, have to be distance divided by rate. Um, so his distance is actually, and I'm going to just put this down as a piece here, his distance is the first 20 and his rate was 16 miles per hour. 20 over 16 equals the time for the first 20 miles. Then we're going to match this and say, well, the distance of the remainder is 30, and his speed was unknown, s, and that is the time for the next 30 miles. Well, 20 over 16 reduces to uh, 5 over 4. And we're going to add the time for remaining. And that's equal to the time to finish the race. That's the total time. And it says it's less than 2.5 hours. As long as our units match, this should be the equation we need. Um, 5 over 4 plus 30 over s is less than 2.5. And it wants to know what his average speed is. So what we're going to do is actually, I'm, I'm just going to subtract 5 fourths. Um, we haven't yet done multiplying through with variables in the denominator. I don't want to mess with that just yet. So 30 over 5 is less than, well, 2.5 is 5 halves. 5 halves minus 5 fourths is 5 fourths. Prove that to yourself. Um, so now we have this, 30 over s, 5 over 4. Uh, I try to think of you guys want the easiest possible way to do this when it's not an equal sign, but I suppose we could do a multiply through by a 4s. S is not negative, um, so that works. So I'm going to do an LCD of 4s here. I could have done that originally. Um, if I do an LCD of 4s, my s's cancel and I get 120, and then my 4s cancel and I get 5s. Divide both sides by a 5, flip it around, and I get s is greater than. Um, that would be 24. Is that right? Yeah. Um, so we know that he needs to, oh, average race, if he's to finish race in less than two hours. So it means he needs to go greater than four, 24 miles per hour. So he should bike more than 24 miles per hour. Hope this wasn't too boring for you. I will stop it now and let it render. Homework's at the bottom. If you need to see it right now, well, there. Ooh, there's a little review odds, too. Lo siento, but you're going to need to start the review uh, if you want. But there's only, like, eight problems, so don't worry about it. Okay, I'm stopping now. Bye-bye.